Good morning. Good morning to all my Watercolor Wednesday friends. Thank you for being with me again. Thanks for sharing a little bit of your Wednesday with me. Uh, I love seeing you all on here. So please give me a shout out. Send me a comment. Tell me that you're watching. <clears throat> my comments are always a little bit delayed. So kind of waiting for those to come in. But I see some of you on already. Thank you so much. Okay, here we go. I see you guys on here, so. Okay, here are my people. I see you popping on. Debbie Hedges, hello. <laughs> Debbie is in, or in Oregon with us, actually in Salem. Uh, Lonnie, hello. Carol, hello. Laura, hello. Carolyn, good morning. Uh, Barbara, Carol, hello to all of you. Thanks, you guys, for meeting me on Wednesday mornings. This is the best. I mean, what a better way to start your day than a little watercolor um, and creating something beautiful. And I do have a really fun project for you today. Sheila, hello. Uh, Phil is in the house. So hello to him. You guys say hi to him. He loves being on here. He loves our people like I love our people too. We all do. So he appreciates all of you being on and watching too. So I have a project for you today and we are going back to the lake. Okay, so here is, uh, here is one of the newest simple scenes. There are two. Uh, there's the Rocky River. So this one right here, which I will come back to too. I did one tutorial on that one. And now I'm on to the Simple Scenes, the lake. And last week I did a tutorial with the lake and I only used half. So this time I'm not using the whole thing again. I'm just using the front, the front of it. So uh, one of these tutorials, you guys, I will use the entire Simple Scene lake. I really will. But I love that I can challenge you to think outside of the box a little bit and you can look at these things and use bits and pieces of them because that's what makes them so versatile and a little challenging and super, super fun. So, uh, hello, I'm, I'm checking my comments now as I'm talking to you. So, hello to all of you. If I've missed you and your comment has gone by, hello to all of you and thank you so much for joining me. I love seeing you all on here. Let me show you what the project is for today. Now, last time we used a little, a little tiny canvas. It was actually this big. So it is a it was two and a quarter by three and a two and a half by three and a quarter. So actually, we're using it this way this time. Uh, I love these little canvases. They're not intimidating. It's a, actually a great way to start, you know, with little canvas. But here is our project. Now I put it into a four by six uh, mat. So it doesn't even if it's little like this, it's super cute in a bigger frame. So don't feel like because it's a tiny little canvas, you got to put it in a tiny little frame. You don't have to do that. Uh, you could put it in a bigger frame like this. This is a four by six, which I also love. And I love having that white border around it. So uh, this one, this is the pond set. And I love, love this pond set. So we are going to put this together. Now, there were a hundred ways that I could use this pond set. And I came all the way back to making it simple again. So, uh, you know, down the road, it's gonna come up again. I'm gonna use it over and over again. These things are all staples that we are going to come back to. When you buy these sets, you're buying it as a collection. So you're buying these pieces and as new things come out, you're going to be able to use these things with the new things that come out as well as things that uh, have come out in the past. So I will be coming back to them. Uh, but for today, I want to just show you uh, mostly how to put these things together, how to color those little ducks. They're super cute and put together a simple little pond scene. So we will, like I said, get down the road. Um, we'll do something a little more complex with it. But um, for today, it's going to be a simple one. So let me just um, say hi to a few more of you on here. Hello, Nancy. Hello, Anne. Hello, Ruth Ann. Ruth Ann is in the house. Lori, hello. Lee, hello. Tony, good morning. Uh, Melody, good morning. Uh, Nancy, hello. Can't wait to get this new set. You are going to love this little set. It's so cute. It's really, really fun. And we're going to actually use several things in it. So we're going to use the cattails. 
um, of course, we're gonna use those. We're gonna use the ducks and some of the little, um, the lily pads, we're gonna use those. So pretty much um, the whole set. So are you guys ready? It's 10.05, I usually like to start right away. Um, so let me just see if there's anyone else here that I, here's Kathy Ensenius, hello. Um, Joey, hello. Michelle, hello. Michelle is a fabulous artist. If you are part of the Art Impression stamp group, for the private group, uh, you have seen her work, but she is an incredible artist and so innovative. So if you want some inspiration, get on that group because they are amazing. Now it's a private group, so you don't have to ask to join, but it's a matter of answering a couple of questions and then you can be part of that group. I think there are over 2,600 now and mostly watercolor. There are some fabulous artists and I don't know, it's fun to see new things. And I, you know, I cruise through there and I see what they're making and I'm just blown away because uh, I kind of have in my own mind how these things are to be used, but they take it and take it to a whole uh, different level. Our design team members are on there who are also fabulous, amazing artists and it's just really fun to see what they're doing. They're always doing something, posting all the time, super encouraging, but wow, are there some amazing artists on that group. So let's get going, you guys. Now it's 10.06, so let's get going and get onto this project. I'm gonna switch you guys around now. And get my, get you up on the stand here and get this set up. And I'm going to add another light here just because I feel like it's a little dark. Okay, that's much better, there we go. So here is our project. This is the project that we're doing today. So we've got our two little ducks. Uh, let me show you what other ones we're using. Now this is it, this is it here, here. it's uh, 5424, it's a watercolor pond set. We're gonna use the two ducks uh, we're going to use the lily pads and the small cocktails with the large foliage here. Okay, so those two. Uh, here is the here is the lake scene that we're using. This is number 5430. This is the lake scene, and I'll show you which parts we're using it. Now, this thing, it looks so simple, but it is so versatile. Last time we used half of it, so this, this half over here. This time we're just going to use the front, and I'll show you... Um, I'll show you a little closer view of that when we get ready to start. Now in the weathered stumps, I'm gonna use one of these. So this one right here and this one right here. Now you could use either of these two. Um, I picked this one just because I want it to turn this direction so you can see it here. And I've actually stamped it off the page, which adds a little interest as well. So these two and then the rocks. Now these are part of the newest release here. There are two sets of rocks. Um, some large ones and some small ones. And honestly, uh, in this small set, you could probably use any of these. Now, I chose this one because I used this one before, so I wanted to do something different. I love this set because they're spread out a little bit, and I've created this little pathway with it. And I think that um, that was really fun to do that. So we're gonna create that on here. So it's this one that I'm using, but like I said, uh, any of these little rock piles would would work with this composition for sure. This is the rock small, the small one, five four one four. Now, in addition to those, there's not a lot uh, else that we're using. I I took some of these little um, accent grasses and added a few of these in here. So that would be this one or this one, either one. And then in the mini flower set, I just added a little kind of a touch of color to it and that's this these little dots right here. So that's totally up to you uh, if you want to add kind of a splash of color. I brought this little tree branch down in here and so that's this one in the branches set. And then in the foliage, uh, just the little grass and the vine. So uh, just back to the staples again, you know, here with the, with the basics. Now, uh, this is what I, now this was my third try. So let me show you, I did this last time. So let me show you what my process is as far as um, how I start with these things and where I end up and what things that I wanted to change. So here's, here's the first one that I did. 
I, I don't mind this one. I feel like um, I kind of lost the water a little bit. I had too much of the same color going into it and I couldn't really tell where the ground and the water, uh, where the ground ended and the water started. And I also kind of lost my um, my lily pads here. But I did like the, the path, I did like that, and I like the placement of the tree. So I sort of took those things and then went on to the next, my next version. Now in this version, I kind of um, made the path a little larger and I ended up with my final one going back to that small version. But I did get a little more definition here with the pond. And uh, the really the correction here would be, I don't feel like I stamped this tree dark enough uh, and the stump dark enough. But I did like this back in the background. Now I didn't do this back here, but I like the, the lighter cattails in the background. So, you know, I, it's, a, it's kind of a process of, of um, doing it. And it's a really good exercise to stamp a project a couple of times because your confidence level and you, you can see, and even, you know, me, I, I do this all the time. I am doing watercolor almost every day and I still have things that I correct and I would change, you know, when I put a composition together. You know, maybe tweaking the color a little bit, tweaking the placement a little bit, uh, maybe stamping something a little darker or lighter next time. Uh, just, you know, those things really, um, you know, make a difference. And it gives you a little more confidence when you're stamping it, you know, more than one time. So uh, just a little tip. Uh, Nicole says she is watching with a marvelous glass of white wine. That sounds great. Good for you, Nicole. Um I am just glad you're watching. I'm so glad all of you are here. This is so, this is so fun. Okay, so I um, I have marked out on my canvas this size. So this is three and a quarter by two and a half. Now it doesn't have to be this size. You know, I just, I like this size, but you know, it doesn't, it's totally up to you and how you wanna do it. But I also think there is something about having a border especially when you're doing a really busy scene. It kind of helps you keep everything contained. And this is a really good size. So um, I cut the paper to this size and then I trace around it with a pencil. It's just easier that way. So now that we've got this done, I'm gonna take some uh, post-it tape. This is just simple post-it tape. And I'm going to block out this area so that I don't um, stamp outside of the lines. And this tape, you know, you can use over and over again. Um, it actually stays sticky for quite a few uses. So I get, I, I get new stuff because um, it's prettier, you know, and cleaner, you know, for the lives. But I have old tape that I have all over the place that I just grab and use again. So um, keep that in mind, you know, when you purchase this because this is really a must. It's kind of one of those tools that you need to have. Okay, so now I've blocked out everything and I've got my space ready to go. So the first thing that I wanna do is decide where my, uh, my lake is going. So let me show you, because this looks really busy, let me show you where the lake is on here. Uh, now this is it too. And these little um, acetates, they're really nice for placement to be able to tell you know, exactly where you're going to put things. So you can see here is the lake here. And you know, there's something about having the outline and the construction here first, uh, the foundation uh, for your eye to be able to see, you know, where everything is going, where you're going to place everything. And it just kind of gives you a little uh, a boundary, some boundaries. So you can see where I just inked to here and to here. And then I added my, uh, my little stump and all of that. And I placed the birds, you know, I placed the ducks, this one up a little higher. So it gives the impression that the, the pond is continuing on. And the reason that I didn't use the background on this is because I want to highlight these two little ducks. This is the focal point of this little piece. And so I really want to make sure that you can see them clearly. And you know, with something as busy as this, if I were to continue this all the way around, these little guys would kind of get lost in the composition. The only way to really fix that would be to keep this very light around them and not get too much color close to them. But I feel like in this case, with this small little canvas, it's better to keep this light back here. 
and then you can really we can really highlight them and see them in the composition they don't get lost and he of course is bright because his little head is green so these are mallards by the way the male is the really pretty bright one and the female she's you know she's more plain but she's still very cute and we can make her very cute even though she's a little plain so uh in this one when i went to stamp this and by the way the the lake can also be uh, tweaked so you can turn it a little bit so you can bring it down like this and you can tweak it to kind of fit your um to fit your canvas now this is this is actually straight the way that i have it stamped on here and it looks like i'm about a half inch so let me just see here if i'm about a half inch off uh, from the edge yep that's about where i've stamped it from the bottom of my uh, my taped off area to to this line down here is about a half inch. So if you want to know exactly where to place that, about a half inch from the bottom. And this one, I have stamped this, a this edge off, completely off. Let me put this where it goes again so that you can really see here. And this one is stamped off the edge. This one is showing here. And it's about a half inch from the bottom. Okay, so let's do that. Let's go ahead and stamp that on here. Now, I'm going to stamp a lot of things. I keep coming back to this one, but I, I, I'm gonna stamp a lot in the front. So I'm gonna keep this front area very light. Now, this area where the where the pond is, uh, I can keep, I can add that the green to that, and I'll show you what I mean by that. So when I go to stamp, so this is this is right side up, and you can see through this. So first of all, let's just, you know what, if we're gonna be technical here, let's do it. Uh, so let's take our little handy ruler. This is also a must-have and go up a half inch So that's a half inch from here from my taped off section up now That's where that bottom line would be So when I go to stamp this it's going to be right here and remember what I said this one is still showing Here and this one is stamped off the edge. So pretty much it's going to be right here just like that Okay so let's go ahead. Now, if you're using uh, uh, the rubber of this, you want to use your positioner because you'll be able to position it exactly the same way. It's just that you want to stamp it onto the large acetate or the not the acetate, the um, acrylic sheet that comes with it. And then you want to use that to position it here. Okay, so I'm going to use a very light. This is the N89, so very, very light gray. And I'm going to use the cool, the cool green, so 249. And I'm going to just ink this this part here with the green. And then the bottom down here uh, with this very, very light gray. And now I can stamp it exactly where uh, we said we were gonna put it. So remember that it's gonna go right over that little dot. It's gonna stamp off the edge with that one little spot um, showing. Okay, that's just about perfect. So you can see how light this is. We're not gonna have to fight this line when we go to put in grasses and rocks and um, everything else that we're putting in here. So now we can kind of take that little pencil line out and I'm going to zoom in a little bit and see if I can get a little closer in here so you guys can see. So you can see where that line is. You see how light this is in here? This is okay because this is this is the side of the pond and that's gonna be green or blue or whatever it is that we put in there. Um, so it doesn't matter if that's a little bit darker. So you can see your boundaries now and you can see exactly where this pond is gonna be. So let's get our other elements in. So we're gonna start out by, um, let's, put, let's put in, um, let's put the little ducks in Let's do that first and then we'll add everything else because we want to make sure that these guys are kind of up a little bit farther towards the top and maybe even above this line. So let me show you that again. So you can see where that line is here. Here's that line. You see how far up that little girl is? She's, she's up above so that we give the impression that this is continuing on. So let's do it and I'm going to uh, ink this up and then I'm going to stamp it off onto a piece of scratch watercolor paper, and then I'm gonna use my positioner. And I think I've already stamped, I have already stamped this on here so I can see. And now here's how you stamp it on here. You just ink this, stamp it in the corner, and that's how you place it 
where you're going to place it. And I think uh, we're gonna put her up a little bit higher and we're gonna move her over just a little bit more to the side. And make sure they're straight in here. And then remove this. Now I'm going to ink this with two colors. So the dark blue, the 565. We're gonna ink this up first. And this just makes them a little more gray. And then the dark brown, so the 969. And then I'm going to stamp this off because this will be way, way too dark. See how dark that is? Way too dark. And then I'm going to just stamp it in here and just good even pressure not to, don't press on down too hard. You know, we don't want uh, this action where you're pressing down too hard and you get these really, really thick lines. That's not what we're looking for. We want a thin, even line that we can drag that color out of and create something that looks realistic. So that's, that's what we're doing here. So now that we've got these guys in, let's go ahead and put in the rest of these elements. So let's put the little tree, tree stump in, this one, and we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna ink it and stamp it off. And I think, do I have this one on here too? Um, yep, I do. So I can place this one and maybe just right down in here. Uh, now, now I can go over, you see where this kind of ends here? I can go over, that's okay, because what that will do is just drag that pond line over. So it's not a big deal to extend over the top of that or uh, go farther than that line. Okay, so I'm gonna place my positioner right there. You could also uh, leave a section of this stump off. So if you don't wanna extend over, just leave this little section here. This little section right here, just leave that off. You don't, have to, you don't have to ink the whole thing. In fact, let me just show you, we can do that. So I'm going to ink this in two colors again. Uh, and also I want this a little grayer, so that's why I'm doing the blue first. So I'm just inking this section and leaving that other part off. And here's the brown again. So we're gonna put this right over here. And I'm gonna stamp this off because this stump is a little farther in the background and I don't need it to be that, um, to be that dark. Okay, so that just made that a little bit smaller in here. We just took that line off, so that's no big deal. So let's go on down here now to the, um, to this tree, this dead tree. And let's see where we should put that. Let me move this out of the way. I've just got too much stuff everywhere. Okay, so I've got this and I'm going to stamp this over this little pond line and kind of turn it a little bit just to make it a little more interesting. And I think that's probably pretty good there. I wanna leave enough room for my little path. So I think this is, this is probably good right here. And I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna ink this in the same two colors. And this time I'm not going to stamp it off because this is more into the foreground. So it's okay to have a little more color on this one. Uh, we still don't wanna press down super hard. You know, I think as stampers, we just, we wanna get that good impression. And so sometimes we just mash that stamp down into the paper. And this is not like traditional stamping. It's more like a press. You're pressing down the image to get that outline. So you're not, you know, mashing that stamp into the paper. And it's, it's a little bit of a, um, a learning curve, it really is. So you don't stamp it too hard. Okay, so now, and I always take my positioner away so that I can get a good even pressure on here. And that's exactly what we want. Don't worry if the lines aren't exactly all perfectly on here, that's okay. It's going to all kind of blend together. So we've got this in now. So let's add our rocks for our little rock um, path. And let's see if I've got those on here. Oh, you know what? Let's do the lily pads first. Let's do these guys. Let's get these in. And I'm only using the top. So let me show you on here so that you can see. It, there are actually six lily pads. There's larger ones and smaller ones. So we're just gonna use the top three, the smaller ones right here. We're just gonna put those in. 
So that's what I've inked on my um, on my positioner. So, and I wanna put those little stones in, so I'm just gonna bring this up a little bit like that. That looks good. And now I can just ink these two, and I'm just gonna use the dark, um, the cool green here. And you know, when I say cool green, it's the 249. It just has more blue in it. And then I'm gonna stamp those right in there like that. And now we can get the rocks in, and I think we've got all of our elements in. And it doesn't look very impressive, does it? I mean, at this point, never give up at this point because it kind of looks like um, a stamped mess, but it will all come together. Don't ever give up at this point. Uh, okay, so we're gonna do the rocks. We're gonna do the blue again first. And then we are going to do the brown, the 969. And I am going to, um, I'm gonna stamp this off just a tiny little bit. I don't, I don't necessarily need, you know, a huge amount of color. And let me see if I've got this, I do. I've got this on my positioner. And I'm gonna stamp that right over the line and just a little bit from the edge. Okay, wow, that's a lot. Of, <laughs> that's a lot of stuff in here. But you guys, I promise this is all gonna come together. Trust me. Okay, so let's get going on here. Let's um, let's start with the focal point. Okay, let's start with the little ducks because once we get them in, uh, we'll be able to see how this is all gonna come together. So let me move all my stuff out of the way here. and just leave what we're still going to use. So basically what I'm doing is taking away all my stamps that are big like this that I've already used and I don't need to use anymore. I don't know about you, but everything seems to close in. You know, it doesn't matter how big my table is. I don't know why I end up with about eight inches square. You know, I don't know if that happens to you, but and it's sort of like everything just kind of rolls in on itself. Okay, so. Let's get going. Now I'm using two brushes. So if you don't own a tiny little um, accent brush, this one is a number one. We sell both sizes. We sell a six, a four, and a one. Uh, if you have a four, that's the staple. That's the one that you need for most projects. But then I would get a one. A one is also very, very useful. So, you know, as you go and as you do more projects, I would invest in a number one if you don't have one of these because when you're doing these tiny little um creatures, you really need to have a small, small brush. So the first thing we're going to do is use this little brush and kind of pull the color out of the lines carefully, carefully pull the color out of the lines. Now, you know, I used a reference because I wasn't exactly sure what the coloring was and where the, you know, the little green, his little green head ended. And so I used a reference and I just went to Google and looked up Mallard Ducks and all these pictures came up. And so I was able to see exactly how to color, um, how to color them. So, you know, use those resources if you, if you're not sure um, how to color these guys. So the rest of his body is pretty light. Um, we'll put a little shadow in here, you know, because he's sitting on the water, but this is where the color is, in, is in this section. And if you're, if you're not sure, use your pencil, you know, his, um, the color kind of comes down like this, you know, across his body like that. So put that in. He also has a little collar here, a little white collar. So you don't want to, you don't want to miss that. That's really, really important between his green head and his brown chest. So you want that little white um, border in there and you can always erase this, but it's kind of a reminder so that you don't, um, you don't forget that little detail. So let's add some green. This is a warm green and this is the number 177. And I'm just gonna add a little bright green to it too. So this is a 173. We have these now. So I love this bright green. And uh, I'm gonna mix it a little bit with this other green because his little head is very bright. Very, very bright green. So I'm gonna mix these two together and just start out very lightly. 
uh, try to um, stay away from where the eye is. Remember, you can always go back in and you can um, add more color. And I'll hold this up too so that you can see. I know this is a really tiny little detail. So I'm just leaving a tiny little bit of white where his eye is, and then we're gonna come in and put that, that eye back in. His beak is yellow, so I'm just using, it doesn't matter which yellow you're using. So we'll get his little beak in there. And then his chest, it's, it's a brown, but it's kind of a um, cool brown. This has got a lot of green in it. This is our brown that we use for everything, the 969. So I'm gonna add a little dark blue to it to kind of cool it down a little bit and gray it up. And so I'm gonna add these two colors together. And this kind of, you know, this makes a really nice color for his chest. It's just a, a little grayer. And just carefully add that in there. Make sure you leave that little white, it's a little white collar. And I'm gonna add a little more of this green, just kind of right around his cheek area. And then I'm gonna take my fine tip. So here's my twin tone, my fine tip, and I'm just gonna put his little eye, his little eye back in. And we can do that for her too little girl and her beak is brown she doesn't even have a yellow beak she's got a brown beak so we can put her little beak in and we can come back if we want to darken him up a little bit we can come back in and add some more color to him but right now he's pretty good let's go on and do her and I'm gonna still use my let me just you know what let me just hold this up so that you can see um, it's such a tiny little area, but do you see that color and that little white band in between there? And then the yellow beak. So let's go on and do her. Now she's, she's pretty much all brown. She's got some little speckles on her. So we're going to, you know, get mostly, you know, get her colored in, but stay in each section, you know, all of her little feather sections, stay in each section. So don't color all her all solid. And then leave a little highlight, you know, at the top of her head here. And then we're going to take, uh, I'm just going to take my twin tone and I'm just going to make some little um, hash marks in here, kind of along her wing, uh, underneath here. She's got a lot of speckles on here. So let me hold this up so you can see exactly what I did here. See, I just made a bunch of little hash lines. And then we can go back in now with the brush and just kind of dab at them. And get kind of get her all speckled up. Leave that, you know, little highlight on the top. Try to stay in each section. And we can come back to her too. Okay, but we've got a really good start here. And then I'm just going to add just a tiny bit of this, this blue um, just to put a little shadow underneath him and her. Okay, it'll kind of gray her up a little bit too in the background. Just getting a little more color on her face. You guys can see that. Okay, so let's continue on here. Let's just move around and we can go to the this little stump now. And you know, we can add more color. So, you know, with these compositions, we're doing the basics to start out. You know, and the, by the basics, I mean we're just pulling the color out of the lines and then we can add more color to it as we go. Just getting a mix of color here. This is, you know, a little bit more in the background, so this is kind of fading out a little bit. But we still want to see, you know, some highlights on here. So we don't want to color it all solid. 
Now let's just come in here and do our little bank. Now that's only the front. So, you know, um, when you're doing this, when you're pulling this color out, it's only, it's only the front of the curve. So just here, not here, not behind, but just the front. So here. You see how that uh, changes the, the dimension? And then well, let's just extend this line out a little bit. Okay, so let's keep going. I'm gonna add a little more color now to this stump. Don't be afraid to mix, mix color. You know, these things that are outside like this, you know, these stumps they have a lot of different colors on them. So you could add some greens, you could add some blues, some browns. And then I'm gonna take my fine tip and really kind of darken in this little crack here. You know, as this comes down. You know, anywhere that you can kind of see where there would be a crack or something that would, you know, be darker, you know, do that because it's gonna really add to your to your composition. You're gonna be able to see that dark to light. Okay, so let's keep going. Let's go on to the little lily pads. And I'm gonna go back to my tiny little brush and I'm just going to pull this color out. I don't wanna lose this co the composition of these little, these little guys. So I don't wanna lose that detail in the center. So I'm just gonna very lightly pull the color, pull the color out to the center. And these are pretty bright, so I'm gonna take some of this really bright green and add some of this to it. And you know, I should tell you guys, if you would like to have this, I will give it away. Uh, so if you if you want it, if you want to be included in the drawing, just say, uh, include me in the drawing for Bonnie's sample, or I want Bonnie's sample or something like that in the comments, and then we'll we'll do that. So that'll give you a chance to do that. And I, I always wait a couple of days so that um, I can get people in it who uh, may not be able to watch it live. So if you are watching a recording of this, um, you still have a chance to get that. Okay, so we are moving right along here. I'm still using my tiny little brush and I'm gonna do these little rocks. You know, with rocks, if you just think about the bottom of the rocks are the darkest. When you're pulling the color out of the lines, you're pulling it from the bottom up. You see that? it's all, They're always going to be lighter on the top. Now, they can be uncolored lighter or they can be very dark rocks, but they need to be lighter on the top. And that will give you that, um, that look that they're three-dimensional, not flat. We just, we can't have anything that's flat. See, the, the color is always going to be on the bottom. And with these two, you know, they're, they're by the pond, so they're gonna, they're gonna probably have some green on them. We can add a little bit of that. Uh, we can add some brown, some blue. And just kind of dab it on here. Uh, you can also add some black. We can add some black and get this really dark in between here. You know, in between the, the two rocks, that's gonna be darker, kind of hidden, you know, anything that, that would be hidden by the light and on the bottom. Let me hold that up because it's really tiny. Okay, so let's um, switch back to the other brush. 
And I'm gonna take a little bit of this color now and kind of drag it out uh, to kind of create the path. And it's gonna kind of come between uh, these, these rocks here and sort of curve around this way. Now this is also something that you can do with a pencil. You know, if you're not sure where it's gonna go, uh, just take your pencil and just kind of fill it in or draw, draw your line. So it's gonna kind of come down like this. <clears throat> you can see that, that little shadow. So that'll give us a kind of an idea of what we're doing here. Okay, so let's move on now to this guy. And this area in here is very dark inside this, this little dead tree. Who knows what's living in it? All kinds of things. So it's, it's been out here a while. And I'm just, I'm pulling that color out. And it's also going to have a mix of color and it's also going to be darker on the bottom for sure. And I can take um, any of this from my palette too and add some more color to it. And this is where we can really do something uh, darker with a, with a uh, twin tone. So this is the, the brown. You can see down in here, this would be really, really dark in here. And in here. And you know, when you can, when you can go from dark, dark, you know, to light, that's when you're gonna really see that, um, that three-dimensional look. So now I'm going to take some green. So this is the 177. I'm gonna put some on my palette and some blue. This is that dark, the dark blue, 565 and then our pond color. Now I'm using the really warm blue, 526 for the pond color. This is really bright, but I love this color. I love it in these little scenes. It just reminds me of um, Beatrix Potter. You know, those little scenes with all the little characters, the, the mice and the bunnies and all that. Like she has this like beautiful blue in so many things. And I just think it's so cute. So we can take some of this and the green or the blue and we're just gonna come underneath here and create this, this shadow. And this is what I mean by, you know, adding some different colors in here. You know, some mossy colors, you know, just kind of mixing it all up. And just kind of dabbing it in. Okay, so we are looking good here. We've got our most, we've got most everything kind of dealt with here. So let's tackle the, um, let's tackle the foliage and then we'll get to the water. So we're going to stamp the, um, the wild grasses here that go with the cattails. And I'm going to use <clears throat> the 177. This is the larger one too, by the way. And I'm going to kind of stamp it off the page Start down here, and I can come up a little bit, and I can just add a little bit more in here like this. So I can go a little bit higher. And this one too, in here like that. And then I'm just going to kind of follow these, these little um, leaves down with my brush. And kind of soften this area underneath here too. Okay, that looks pretty good. So let's um, 
let's go ahead and do the um, let's go ahead and do the water, especially in the in the center. Now, you know where these little guys are. We want to keep this the highlight, so this area has to be the lightest. So I'm just going to start out with my light blue, and maybe a tiny little green in it, and just start out really light. Now, you know if they're swimming, you know you're going to see these little motion lines in here. And we also want to put in a little reflection, so we want to keep this very light. And the same with her back here. And then as we get closer to the shore, the color is going to get darker. So we can just kind of come out, you know, a little bit in here like this and just add. some of this color in here. We can always go darker. So we're just kind of starting out by getting this color in here. And just kind of brushing it in like this. Any of this area that's kind of, you know, by the shore, that's gonna be darker. And we really don't have to do much up here. Uh, it's your you. Um, we're showing that there is water up here, obviously where there's the, where this little duck is. So we're just we're kind of showing that without actually brushing it in. So let's go ahead now and add a bit of a shadow here. We're gonna just kind of mirror what we've done with this little guy. Leave a little space and just kind of mirror this dark area. And then the green. And some yellow here. And his little beak. We're going to see that. And then the rest we can just kind of do with, you know, just a little bit of color under here because he's pretty light. So we don't need to have a lot. And then let's just put in a very light little shadow. So we got his little reflection in there. Let me hold this up so you can see it a little closer. You don't have to, you know, you're just doing the idea of this. So if you don't get this perfect, it's okay. You just wanna see some brown and some green and some yellow, honestly. That's really it because your eye will look at that and go, oh, that's a, that's a reflection in the water. So don't worry about, you know, getting this part perfect. Just, just put a little bit of this color in there and it's gonna work. And then under her too, I wanna to just get a little more color under her. So she's got a little shadow. Now the shadow would extend clear back here to where the tail is. And the same. Are you guys all still there? Something happened. Looks like it just... I didn't lose anyone, did I? You guys all still there? Okay, I think I've still got you guys on here. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna add some more color now. I'm gonna mix this green and blue, and I'm gonna add some more color next to the to the bank, and kind of drag it out and drag it to the center. Now remember, we want to keep this lighter where these little birds are. And you can just keep going darker and darker until you're happy with it. And we can, you know, you can get some more color in between these little lily pads too. That's totally fine. And be careful, you know, when you're by this the tree, you know, that's going to be pretty dark. And 
and the more you know passes that you make the darker it's going to be so you just just keep adding until you're kind of happy with it okay so let's just let's keep going here we're doing good uh i'm gonna put in some sky and i'm gonna use this blue this is the cool blue so that dark blue and i'm gonna kind of start up here and I'm, I'm really just starting at the corner because I wanna make sure that I have color so that when I take the tape off, uh, I'm gonna have you know this little square kind of detail. And again, this area, we wanna leave that light. So kind of start where it's darker on the, on the corner and just kind of drag it over. And you know, you can see I'm getting a little bit of the green in there, that's okay. Totally fine. Just, you know, when you're doing the sky, it's it's almost like you're you're pushing the color. You're not you're not doing any brush strokes. It's too hard to control if you try to do brush strokes. Okay, let me hold this up so you can see where we're going here. Okay? So we can let this dry now. Can let that dry. Let's go ahead and add some grasses. This sort of, you know, kind of brings it all together. You know, I go back to this. This is one of the first stamps I ever did. And I have not improved on it because this little thing is just, it just works so great. I absolutely love it. Okay, this is uh, the number 27 now. Um, I believe we are getting this in if we don't have it already. We are getting it in. <clears throat> so if you don't have this number 27, it's more of a, um, it's a it's a very um, olive green is what it is. And that's what I'm going to use on here. And I'm just going to kind of stamp it in here like this. And then I'm going to come back to this green and kind of stamp it over the top. And then in between here, so uh, a little bit in between, and then you can kind of outline your, your path with it. And then maybe just a little bit in here. Uh, we can add some, you know, next to this tree, this little dead tree, um, up in here. And then we can just add some water. Just kind of, you know, pull that color out, drag it up and out so that it looks natural. And then I'm just gonna put some down in this corner too because <clears throat> the same as the sky up there, I wanna make sure that I have a, I have a border. And I'll just pull some of this out. Now I'm gonna add a little of this brown in here, uh, just into this path. So it's gonna kinda come through here. And I'm just gonna add a little bit of of color. Now, if you if you kind of drag this this up or down, just make some little sweeping lines. You can kind of bring that path up. And then we can add a little shadow in here. And I'm gonna take some green now, <clears throat> and I'm just gonna go along this bank. And just kind of give us a little uh, bank. Okay, 
finish up this grass here. And here's our outline here. So let's make this a little darker so we can see where that where that water goes. You know, when you're looking at a pond, you know, there's so much green algae in it that it really does look like the grass. It's very green. You know, and adding the little details in, I, it just changes so much. It's just, it's just what makes it so much fun. You know, when you add the grasses and the foliages and all of that in, and you go from a stamped image to, a, you know, a watercolor painting that could be framed. I just think that is just so cool. I absolutely love it. And I'm just blown away by what you guys are doing with it. I just feel like, you know, a mother hen with all my little, you know, artist chicks. And I'm just so proud of you. I just sit back and I'm just so proud of you and your work and what you're creating. I absolutely love it. I'm going to put a little bank, you know, just a little dark. You see how that lifts? You see how that lifts those little um, what are, um, lily pads? Do you see how that kind of lifts them up by just putting a little bank on there? Just a little dark color. And I'm just going to make this a little darker. But you see this also just kind of, you know, lifts this bank up. Kind of brings it up. I always think about, you know, grasses hanging over, things hanging over, just overgrown, um, things like this. And let's put a little more color in here, a little of this warmer color onto this tree stump. It's gonna kind of have a reflection of that water too. So, you know, there's so many different colors. You really can't go wrong um, if you just add a bunch of different colors in here. Okay, so let's um, let's go ahead and do the top now. And we're going to stamp in that little tree section. So I'm just going to use this branch, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ink it in two colors. So I'm going to use the dark brown, the 969. And I'm just going to ink this all up with that dark brown. And then I'm going to come over the top with the green, the 177. And I'm just going to kind of, you know, hang it down like this, and then maybe another one over here. So it looks like, you know, you're looking through the trees and you can see these little ducks out here. So let's take the foliage. This is the vine. And I'm just using, I'm using the 177. And I'm just going to add some of this in the background. And then some of it in here. I'm just gonna turn my stamp a little bit. You don't have to do the whole thing. Um, let's put some down in here. You can always come back and add more. And I'm just gonna blend this out. Looks like there's some foliage coming in from behind. And this adds a lot, you know, of dimension too by adding that brown to it, you know, in the, in the branch. You know, just make sure that you leave some white spaces. You don't just color in everything. You don't want to necessarily lose the shape of the stamp, but you want to soften it and just kind of blend it out. So it just looks like it's in the distance. And you can see how light this is in the background. Super, super light.
And I'm just gonna, I see this line here in the background, so I'm just gonna kind of wash it out a little bit. And I can add, you know, this back in with my brush. Now, don't be afraid to do that. You can add anything back in with your brush. You don't necessarily have to stamp it. This is that cool, cool green that looks like blue. It's got a lot of blue in it. Okay, so let's add, I feel like I, I just wanna add a little more <clears throat> detail. Put some of this detail back in. Back in here. Sometimes things get washed out a little bit and I'm just gonna need to put them back in. Okay, so let's put in our cattails because we have not done that yet. And that would be the last thing to go in because um, we wanna make sure we got all the details in. And this is the, it's sort of like an accent. We're putting this in at the very end. So I'm gonna use some brown on the cattails and I'm using the small ones. So kind of going in the background. And then you can use any green, you know, for the stalks. And I'm gonna kind of, you can see I kind of left some uh, light, a little light space here so that we could really see them. And then let's put some in on the other side. Over here. And then I'm gonna um, just put them in really lightly in the background. Almost looks like everything is just fading out back here. I'm going back to my little brush, my number one. And I'm just gonna add some water to these. And these light ones in the background. And I think I'll take my twin tone and just darken these in the foreground. Make them really, really pop. And these we want to leave really light. You know, you can make these longer too and kind of change them up a little bit. And I didn't do them all because um, the darker ones, you know, they come forward. So these lighter ones, they look like they're more in the background. Okay, so now you can leave it as is. You know, if you like it really simple like this and you like just the greenery in here, you can leave it. Or you can add some color. So I'm just going to add this color just to show you. It's hard for me just to leave it without adding any, any flowers. I just kind of always want to do that. But it does look really neat to have it simple too. Now they would really pop back here because see how light that is? So try to, you know, think about when you're putting these in, you know, make sure that you have, you know, some light areas where you can really, really see that color pop. And then we're just gonna touch it a little bit and just dab, just a little bit. And I also picked this purple because um, it's, it's pretty dark. You can stamp it over a lot of color. Now, you know, if, if we were trying to do yellow, that's not gonna work. But, you know, if you wanted yellow blooms in here, you could use your, um, you could use your mask pen and just put some dots in before you started anything. And then you could go back in and do some, you could do some yellow. Okay, I think, I mean, we could just kind of keep playing with this for, you know, another hour. 
but it really is pretty much pretty much done here. We've kept, you know, our little ducks. We've kept them um, as the center. Um, we've got all of our little details all around. And we can see our rocks in here, which are so cute. And the little pond. The only thing I would do is maybe, you know, you could always go back in here and make it darker, you know, next to the grass, next to the edge. You could always do that, but but try to keep it away from, you know, where these little ducks are. Okay, so I guess sign and date. That is the last thing to do. Oh, the reveal. You know what? Let's do the reveal. So let's take all of this off. And you know, I'm not going to throw these away because I will just use these again. And you know, I stick them all over my table. So you could you can put them together like this and they just come right apart and I just use them. Use them again. Put them over to the side. See how cute that is. Our little guys. You know what? I, we could even make, I mean, just looking at this, we could make his little chest even darker. Let's just do that and make him pop a little bit more. So I'm taking my fine tip. And let's really, really, yeah, I think that, I think that adds a lot. So cute. Little ducks are so cute. Okay, so let's now um, erase pencil lines. Be sure you sign your work and date. And I always say date because um, it's amazing how much improvement you make, you know, year to year. And myself included. You know, I have changed a lot. My style has changed a lot. And I am doing things that I didn't do a year or two ago. And I like to see that. I like to see what progress I've made. So always sign and date. And be sure to put in the comments if you would like to have this, this little creation. Uh, I'm going to switch my camera around now and see if anybody has anything else they would like to say to me. Okay, and I'm back face to face. So anybody have any questions, um, anything that you wanna comment on? Um, I will be back again next week with another tutorial, of course. Um, I love doing these, I love this type of art, and I love that anyone can do it. And you know, you may think that you have, you don't have any artistic ability, and let me tell you that you can totally do this technique. It's not hard. And it's a matter of a few simple rules, but you can learn it and you can start out simple and do that. If you're new to this technique, start out simple. Check out Kendra's Back to Basics. She has some great classes, lots of basic information and simple rules that you can um, go back to that will help you be more successful. And you know, that builds confidence and you can just, the sky is the limit, you guys, with what you can do with this. So check her out. She's on every Tuesday at five o'clock Pacific time uh, with her Back to Basics. She just did the Southwest project, a little Southwest project. They are all archived on Facebook, so you can go back and check those out. She is incredibly talented and has been teaching this for many years and is very, very good. So I'm very thankful to have her. So Tuesday nights with Kendra and then me, I'm on Wednesdays, 10 a.m. Pacific time. So my projects are a little more in depth for you that I need to challenge. And boy, do I need to challenge you guys because you're getting so good and I feel the pressure to, you know, stay ahead of you, but I love it. And I love to see what this artwork can do. So um, will there be a new release? Yes. There will be a new release next week, you guys, and I will be do doing a tutorial on that. And once uh, we have one more release coming, once that is done, I will start mixing it up and be doing more and more stuff. So I honestly, you know, with this little pond set, there are so many things that I wanted to show you about it. 
uh, we could have done a way more complex project, but then we would have been here for two or three hours. So, uh, Tony, you are so talented. Appreciate you teaching us each week. Thank you. I appreciate you watching. This is such a privilege for me, and I appreciate you spending your mornings, taking time out to watch these tutorials and do this art. It really, really is fun, and it encourages so many people. Sending them something that you've made is so encouraging for people now. They need something to look forward to and getting a hand-painted little composition art that you have created. It just, it does something for people. It really does. Uh, Debbie, can't, <laughs> thankful for Kendra as well. Yes, Kendra is a great teacher. She has been teaching for many years. Karen Kelly, when is Joel doing a demo for us? You know what? We would love to have him do that. He is a fabulous artist. He is so talented. He is totally different than me. I am much more whimsical. He is much more type A, very type A, but he is incredibly talented. So we are working on that, getting him. He's a behind the scenes guy and does a lot of stuff for us behind the scenes. It could be a Joel and Phil demo. You know, that could be fun. That could really be fun. We'll have to work on that. Um, okay, you guys, anybody have any questions? Uh, you remember, you can do this art. I always like to remind you, you can do this art in any book, dictionary, journal. You can do this in a journal and give it away to someone. You just need to prep the page. So what we did today, this little composition, you can put in a journal and you could give it away to someone. Do something really personal and special in it and give it away. So if you are interested in that, journaling, Bible journaling, uh, doing any of this in any other uh, form besides watercolor paper, uh, follow me on Instagram, Bonnie Krebs Bible Journaling, and I have more on there, more and more inspiration for you. Of course, check out YouTube, check out Pinterest, check out our website, our blog, see our fabulous, incredibly talented design team. Wow, they are so good. We're so thankful for them. Uh, so, you guys, how about a Christmas one? Yes, Christmas is coming. It's July, so we will be thinking about Christmas here really, really soon. The, um, the lake will be so fun to do for Christmas. All of these actually could be done for Christmas. That will be so fun. So I am really, really looking forward to that. I know Kendra is too. She's gonna be do, doing that with some of the basics. So we've got lots and lots of watercolor for you guys. I never want you to run out of inspiration. I want to always be inspiring you to keep going. So um, thank you so much, Natalie. Oh, you are so kind. Thank you so much. The kindest, kindest people are in this industry. I am so thankful. We all are. Phil and I talk about it probably every day, how grateful we are to be able to work with people like you and how kind and encouraging and wonderful you are. We are so blessed and so thankful. So with that being so long-winded, I will sign off and I will see you guys all next week. Be sure to tune in. I'll have a new release and a new tutorial with you uh, for you that um, I hope you'll give it a try. So try this one, absorbent ground product. Yes, that is to prep the page. Thank you for bringing that up, Tony. Yes, you need to prep your page. If you're gonna do this on any other, uh, anywhere else besides watercolor paper, you need to prep your page. Golden, absorbent ground. And you can see tutorials on that. You can see that on Instagram, Bob, Bonnie Krebs Bible Journaling. You can see that tutorial on how to prep your page. So, okay, just a thin layer, yes. Check that out. All right, you guys, anybody have any other questions for me? I am going to sign off and I'll say goodbye and I'll see you all next week, next Wednesday. And thank you guys so much for watching.